ultimately, I think Carol is about how truth is the ultimate tonic. If you're emotionally truthful to who you are and, and what you believe in, uh, good things may not happen, but you will ultimately become a better person. That is at root what it's about. Um, you know, it's obviously concerned with issues of identity and denial and, and um, the repression of the period. But what I love about it is that for its time, and even still today, uh, it's an example of a piece of lesbian literature and the film will be uh, an example of film that does not depend on the character's uh, sexuality to tell the story, which is a love story. Their, uh, their sexuality is not a cause for um, concern. No one hangs themselves. It isn't, it isn't that kind of thing. So it's really kind of unique. In fact, it is unique in the annals of literature. It's also um, a, a particular kind of coming-of-age tale. I mean, it's a classic um, young woman, uh, Therese, uh, finding her way through to the choices that will define her as an adult. It was important for me, one of the great things you got to explore here was a young woman who, who didn't see the world through the eyes of men. I mean, generally, um, you see these, uh, some coming of age tales in literature as well as in film, and women are defined by the way that men look at them, treat them, etc. And this was an opportunity um, to not do that. Carol has a, you know, a, it, it's a classic character dilemma. Um, she's a woman who would appear to have to choose between doing the right thing for her daughter, whom she loves very much, and for herself. Uh, and her journey is of particular interest to me because she realizes that both of those things are addressed with the same action. Uh, again, another really bold stroke by Pat Highsmith in the writing of the book. Um, Carol, Carol is a caretaker of everyone in the book. Uh, the kid, her, do uh, her husband, her, her friend, Abby, and finally Therese, who, who becomes um, the, the, the force for change in Carol's life. Harj is, is a decent man who loves his wife clearly very much in his way uh, and is a provider and all of those things. And he's put in a position that I think most men, most people would find somewhat untenable, that you are faced with something you don't understand. And when you're faced with something you don't understand, you tend to lash out. So in many ways, um, his character reminds us that we, we fear things we don't understand. We make bad decisions as a result of that fear. And we may never be able to um, make that right. But that's what I think he's trying to do in the end. And, he, and, you know, he wants the woman he loves back. It's unique uh, in that it presents lesbian protagonists and not just the two central characters, but there's a third um, lesbian lurking in the book <laughs> who plays quite a central role. And not one of them uh, has a moment's uh, question about the rightness of their sexuality. Um, they've got conflicts and questions about the choices they've made and of course the world of the early 50s, late 40s, early 50s um, was not a, um, a hospitable one uh, for women like them. 
but they navigate their difficulties without resorting to the kinds of, you know, suicidal drinking binges or, you know, the hangings of the children's hour, that kind of thing. And that, for me, sets it really apart. Um, yeah, it's a great story. Uh, it's a wonderful love story, uh, apart from anything else, but that is what sets it apart. It was quite radical for the day and, and now, I think, as well.